guys, how you doing? It's Henry, I'm Mowers and Blowers! Welcome to another episode. Here's the progress so far. As you know from a previous episode, I finished my LT2000 and uh, this is listed and ready to sell. Now I'm gonna park this in the backyard somewhere. I don't really have any room, but my next project's gonna be the uh, motor scooter. The CF Moto 150cc motor scooter that I picked off the street the other day. Uh, I'm really looking forward to trying to get that thing running. And uh, I have so many projects in line. Uh, as you know, I did mother load 33 recently and picked up like 12, 15 new items that I need to go through and fix. Eventually, it'll probably take me all year to do. Uh, but I need to get this out of the garage because it's just, I can't even walk in here. So this thing's ready to go. Looks like it's leaking gas. Uh huh. Gas is all leaked out. Um, that's a common issue with these um, Kohler Courage engines and Kohler Command engines. If you cut the valve on the uh, fuel solenoid, which I did to prevent the surging, uh, they tend to leak. This was the original uh, carburetor for this tractor on the Kohler, there's a Kohler command engine, and uh, it, was, it was dirty and stuff. I did clean it, but to prevent the surging of this carburetor, I cut the valve on the fuel solenoid. So um, obviously it's not seating. When the gas is in the bowl, it pushes the float up, pushes the needle to seat. So looking at this carburetor now, I'm touching the sides of the carburetor bowl and it's filled with gas. It's uh, coming out of the front intake mouth. So that means either the seat is bad or it's leaking somewhere that prevents the fuel from going all the way up. So you know what? Hypo Parts sent me a ton of, uh, not a ton, but a few uh, Kohler Command, Kohler Courage carburetors. I'm just going to do a quick swap and see if that rectifies the issue. Uh, you can use Kohler, you can use that carburetor for both Kohler Courage and Kohler Command. They're both identical. 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 Just going to disconnect the lights. And remove this hood. Hello. There we go. As you can see here, it's been dripping gas, which is why I put cardboard down all the time. So that if I see a leak, it, it's apparent you could see it. But if you didn't have the cardboard on the ground, you wouldn't be able to see it on the concrete. Well, as you can see in this area, Clearly, there has been a leak. This is the old carburetor, the original one. And as you can see, it's very dirty. But I did open it up and clean it when we, when we first uh, tried to fix the surging issue. A lot of oil residue. And as you can see, it's all dirty except for the bowl. Which means that either the bowl gasket is bad and it's leaking through that area. But I think that um, the mouth of the carburetor was, um, the fuel was coming out of there, which means that the needle is not seating. Has something to do with the fuel solenoid too. So uh, I'm going to replace this carburetor once and for all. Hopefully it doesn't surge with the um, fuel solenoid on here. As you guys know, I've had a long-standing relationship with Hypo Parts, and uh, they've sent me a whole bunch of carburetors in the past couple of years, which I've stored for situations just like this. Always keep hypercarburetors available to you. Uh, so whenever you have an issue like this, you don't have to wait for it. You have it right here in stock. So this is a uh, standard carburetor from Hypa. You can easily tell that this is a Kohler carburetor for the shape of the intake mouth. It's kind of shaped like the British underground subway system logo, underground. That's what it looks like. 
top looks like that. Uh, now they make the command ones that have a blob of metal up here, but still works. But this is the original kind, which I like. And this is a direct replacement to the Kohler command engine. And as you can see, this does have a fuel solenoid also on it, but it has the plug-in type, which is different from this one, as this fuel solenoid has a wire coming out of it. So I have to rig these wires to fit this type of pigtail. Or I could just take this fuel solenoid off and replace it with this one just to see if the problem was the gasket and not the fuel solenoid. So I should try that first because it's less work. So I'll install this after I go and walk my dog. So you gotta remove the air cleaner. It's two uh, 10 millimeter bolts that hold the air cleaner base. Taking this off is kind of a pain. Like I said, two 10 millimeter, but I'm using a three eighths and it works it's kind of. There's no gas in the gas tank. As a matter of fact, I think I want to disconnect the gas tank from right here and then blow out because I remember those like some bugs inside the gas tank. So anyway, this disconnect the breather hose over here, easier from over here. And this uh, air cleaner base comes right out. Here's a carburetor right here. Just comes right loose, just like that. Uh, comes right out like this. Then, since you have it loose, disconnect this linkage here to the choke. And then disconnect the fuel solenoid wire. And this just rotate. I have to disconnect this fuel line. I mean, the gas tank is kind of clean, but I remember there was some bugs in there, so it might have gotten sucked into here into the fuel filter. So I'm just gonna disconnect this wire here, uh, this fuel line from the fuel filter. Comes right out. And let's take the gas tank off. It's very easy. Just two three eighths. Hose clamp off over here so it slips through. Gas tank comes right out. See? Now inside could be some stuff, so I'm just gonna dump it like this and blow. I have this thing that's a blow thing. Okay, now that your gas tank is clean. No obstructions. Here again. Back. Oh. Disconnect this fuel line from the carburetor part. I'm gonna blow to make sure this is clear. Put this fuel line back on this thing, clamp. 
So now you know that the fuel line is clear from the gas tank and the gas tank is clear. I think I might have put this gas tank backwards because I remember the, the input of the gas was more closer in there. You know what? I like it better here. Easier access. Here's the carburetor. We'll do a Z, Z bend. That's for the throttle. Make sure the gasket's good over here. And there's a ground wire that goes to this carburetor for the fuel solenoid, but I honestly don't think I want to use it, so I might just take this off. Remove the ground wire. And there it is. There's the original carburetor. This gasket looks good though. See? Let's compare it to the Hypo one. Identical. So I'm going to take off this solenoid, use it as a nut because it's, I clipped it. I'm going to replace it with that one using this good gasket. That's only because I don't want to use the fuel solenoid. That's all. Fuel solenoid has been zipped off. I'm going to actually grind this to be lower now, now that we're not going to power it. Because when you power it, it still goes down a little bit, which was fine. But now that we're not going to use the fuel solenoid uh, powered, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grind that a little bit better. Uh, I just grinded this off so that there's no tip that sticks out at all. So nothing is impeding the fuel from getting there. Also, the gasket was busted on here, so that may have caused a leaking problem too. So we just replace that. It acts as a nut. And hopefully this one has a, well, this is a brand new gasket, so. I realize I'm modifying it because this one doesn't fit. This output of the electricity is a plug-in, two-pronged piglet, right? And this one isn't. So you'd have to modify that anyway, you know? It's just because this model tractor is different. So this is a good fuel solenoid. I'm not going to use it. I never use it. I'm not even going to open this. I'm just going to entrust that it's good. It's brand new. I'm going to replace the um, gasket there for the bowl. And should go right on there. Tighten it with one of these special thin um, fuel solenoid wrenches that's it that's good so this one's good to put on uh, i'm just going to remove the gasket from here and there and fit it <clears throat> i can't find the gasket in the box so i'm just going to take this one off still good just don't rip it like i just did right there <laughs> all right this one would be good take this one off and I ripped this one too. It's too old. I have to go find some gaskets. I don't know where they are. Just got to look in the box. <laughs> there we go. Very distinctive shape of the gasket. See? It's perfectly there. And the part that goes to the intake is very important too. Right. Now, if it still uh, leaks from here, it's not going to leak, but it shouldn't be any problems. But if it does, I'll I'll try to configure this so that I could use this solenoid again. But it's not going to be a problem. I never have a problem. You have to use this pl uh, plastic grommet. 
from the old one. I have to break it like I'm about to right now. This plastic grommet has to go right in there. It's like a spacer because this hole's so big. That's what she said. And actually, this is supposed to have a spring that goes into this little hole there. And I don't have a spring, which probably contributes to why it was surging in the first place. Leave it out because it was running fine. There, and now we have the choke. Choke goes in here. The gasket through like that. The carburetor onto the studs. The new intake carburetor uh, gasket. Put the fuel line back on. The hose clamp. Tighten that. Put the base back on here. Stick this back into the valve cover. What did I do with those nuts? Oh. <clears throat> Just a few clicks, you don't want to over tighten it. Very tight. I'm not going to put the air cleaner on yet because I want to make sure it runs right before we go do that. There's dust here, I'm gonna blow it out because it'll get sucked right into the carburetor, like a vacuum cleaner. So I just need to put fuel in here and we'll start it, see if it leaks, if it runs good. I'm sorry, it runs well. If it doesn't work, we'll have to kind of connect this to some kind of ground. I don't remember if uh, there was a ground strap thing jig to this. I don't think there is, but I have to jig it so I can get another fuel solenoid with the pigtail kind and wire it. Put gas in here and we'll give it a try. Put a decent amount in there just to make sure it doesn't leak. I can come back here tomorrow and see if there's still gas in here. So gas is supposedly trickling through here. It's going in there. So far so good, no leaks, right? It's fired up. No leaks. Choke.
perfect. I'm going to my mother's house to see her for Mother's Day, and uh, we'll come back and see if it leaks. So it's been sitting for a while. We have zero leaks. So because this fuel solenoid, I don't need it. I'm gonna zip off that wire. This wire can be used for some kind of a 12 volt, um, you know, like lights or something or whatever. So I'm just gonna tuck this in somewhere in case the new owner wants to use it. But it uh, looks like we fixed it with a brand new hypercarburetor. Cleaned out the gas tank, checked the fuel lines, make sure everything's free flowing. Here's a fuel shut off. So when you uh, winterize it, you know, your, your winter's coming. You're not gonna use this for like six months. Turn that. Run the engine so that all the gas from the fuel bowl is depleted. And then this is winterized and it's good for next season. Ideally, you wanna just run out all the gas from your gas tank, but if you have too much of it, put some stabilizer in there, turn that off, run it, clear out all the gas from the bowl in the carburetor and you're good to go. So we have no leaks here. I'm gonna wipe this down right here just so that I can tell later on if there was any gas leaks. Make it nice and clean and also you should actually put like a paper towel under here so that when you come back and you see stains on the paper towel you know that it has been leaking while you were gone you know gas does different things to different uh pieces of equipment uh if it sits for a while the gas soaks the seals the gaskets and all that something could swell more and cause leaks so just because you it's not leaking now doesn't mean it won't leak later so you could put something here like a piece of cardboard just to see if it leaks after a few hours of sitting so i'm going to keep that on we're going to make sure that it doesn't leak when and when i get back but all indications show that we have fixed the leak problem by replacing it with a brand new hypercarburetor that fits perfectly Everything looks great. New carburetor from uh, Hypa. You know what? I'm gonna even keep the old one in this box because one day, because we know it runs, it just leaks. You just need to change the gaskets. I think that's what it was. Fuel solenoid, no, not the fuel solenoid because it works. I think it was a fuel solenoid gasket and probably the bowl gasket that was worn, that's all. So uh, just to be safe, we put in a brand new Hypa uh, carburetor for the Kohler Courage or Kohler Command. It's a direct replacement, just put it on, super easy. Uh, very, very good prices too. Check out the Hypa parts store and uh, use the code, uh, discount code Henry for 10% off. Uh, the link is in the description. My piece of cardboard I'm just gonna put here. I'll come back later and see if there's any leaks, but I doubt it, I think we fixed it. Okay, it's been three hours. I'm back from my mom's house for Mother's Day. And oh no, we've got evidence that it still leaks. Okay, so look, here's the test, okay? Where is it leaking from? Am I gonna feel any wetness on the bowl? Which means that the needle is not seeding and the fuel is continuously running up and coming out the mouth. If, or it could be the bowl gasket. Let me just use my fingers and run it along the diameter of the bowl. See if there's any wetness on the side of the bowl. None, it's dry. Now let's feel the sides of the solenoid. Could be the solenoid gasket underneath the bowl. Dry. So it's not wet on the solenoid. Okay dry. Now let's go to the bottom of the solenoid. Uh -huh. It's wet on the bottom of the solenoid, which means there is a leak on the bottom of the solenoid. So we're going to change this solenoid to something else that doesn't leak. I hate to say it, but um, out of hundreds of machines that I've worked on, 
I can count on maybe one hand how many times the solenoid does work. All the other times the solenoid does not work or causes some kind of problems. So a lot of you guys say, oh, it's going to backfire. Oh, so what if it backfires? Jeez. Causes more problems than not. I bet you people throw away their tractors because they don't have a, they have a no start condition due to the solenoid. Solenoid causes more problems than anything else. Plenty of fuel here. Uh, pour it back into the gas tank as much as I can. That gas sucks, by the way. So I'm just gonna A6 this, use the good gasket. I've got another one here got another fuel solenoid that I've already zipped off. I'm just going to replace it. It's a good brand new gasket. And uh, we'll give it a little while and see if this solenoid is leaking. <laughs> Hope not. Also, these solenoids, you need a special tool to get in between the solenoid and the bowl because most wrenches are so thick that it won't fit. So you need to get these thin ones just to get the solenoid off. Now, the average person is not going to have that. There are small engine guys I know that don't have it. <laughs> the thin wrenches. Of course, these thin wrenches are not very strong, but... It'll get, see what I mean? Strips. But that's on there tight enough to seal. There you go. All right, so uh, I'm going to get another piece of cardboard. Oh, I'll just put it like right there because you can see if it drips, it'll drip here, not there. That This is the old spot. New spot is dry. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to chuck this piece of junk. I would normally just put it back here and throw it in my parts bin, but then I'll never know. I won't remember that this one leaks, so I'm just going to throw this one out. While we're waiting to see if that solenoid leaks or not, the whole purpose of me coming out today was to, that's right, make room in my shed for that tractor. Because as you can see, I've got no room for anything in the garage. I'm gonna have a lot of projects, good enough for a year. Let's see if I can clean, make some room in the shed for that track. back we have no leaks now at least it doesn't appear to be dry 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 so that fixed it it was the bad fuel solenoid again so now we got another fuel solenoid on here it's also zipped doesn't work but it's dry So now we're done. Finally. Now I'm going to go and park this in the shed. I sort of made room. I hope it fits.
So I decided to use it and mow, and it seems like it mows very well. Except when I got to around that corner, it started making noises that I didn't like. And so I uh, stopped the tractor and I took a look. And this pulley was crooked. Look at that. Look how loose that is. That is super loose and it was like this. And so uh, it was making a rattling sound. So I have to tighten this. I don't want to have to take the deck off. But uh, that nut needs to be tightened. It's funny because this simple <laughs> carburetor leak replacement has turned into uh, a real repair episode. I uh, managed to do a field strip. I was in the yard lying in the grass uh, with some tools to get the pulley off. And I thought that all you had to do was just, you know, tighten the bolt, right? Because it was so loose and it was just like, like this, you know, curved. So the belt wasn't really moving at high speeds, you know, it's dangerous. It was super hot. I actually burned my finger when I touched the nut, you know? Uh, so I tightened it and I thought that was it. Tightened it really nice, but then it wouldn't move. So I took it off and I see that there's some like metal chunks here. Check this out. The bearings inside are seized. That's why. So inside the bearings of this pulley is seized. It won't move. So the belt was just grinding along this thing. Uh, and maybe not so much because it tilted like that, you know, but the bearings are gone. So I have to go and look into my box of parts to see if I can find a pulley just like this. And then we'll finish mowing the lawn. Okay, got a pulley exactly the same. It's identical. Identical. And this thing spins freely. Uh, not as smooth. I guess you work it around. If I just had some oil or something like that, penetrating oil. <laughs> ah, yeah. Little bit of Earl, never hurt anyone. Sweet, I'm gonna install this and maybe we can finish mowing the lawn now, huh? Okay, it's on there, nice and tight. Give it another try. Glad I didn't have to take that deck off. That was awesome. Night and day. It was so smooth once I put that new pulley on there. <laughs> it mows really well. And uh, engine sounds great. No surging, super smooth. That carburetor works great. And from what I can tell, it doesn't leak anymore. I love it when you don't plan on doing something today and your uh, entire day was uh, <laughs> filled with correcting something that you weren't supposed to correct. But this I feel confident now since I mowed my entire lawn that this is ready to say. It runs great. Look at the way it mowed. Dudes. That is bad ass really really mows well 
good around the corners too. I didn't really sharpen the blades, but I mean, you know, mowed it really well. Very surprised. I like it. Maybe I'll keep it. No, I'm not gonna keep it. I got three. I gotta sell all three because if I get another one, I don't have anywhere to park it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Carburetor replacement from Pipa Parts, thank you. Remember, if you guys wanna get some parts for your tractor or lawnmower, whatever, carburetors, all things small engine, go to hypaparts.com or hypastore.com. It all works. Just Google Hypa and uh, use discount code Henry for 10% off. Uh, impromptu pulley swap on the mower deck of the LT2000. Now we got this thing all ready to go. Tested it out, mowed my lawn, it's fantastic. Uh, this tractor is ready to go. I listed for 850. Take as low as 500. 1275. Take as low as 1000. 1875. Take as low as 1500. 1200. Whatever. Three tractors to sell. I have one push mower to sell and like 10 to fix. But. I promised my next episode, at least the series, is going to start off with my new motor scooter. I want to try to get that going so I can zip around the neighborhood. Thanks all for joining me today on this uh, episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Next time on Mojo Blowers!